he speaks so much to the universal truths of struggling and 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 just so many things about I don't even know how to say it. Um, he just his music speaks to a broad range of people for a broad range of reasons. Um, the energy in it, um, the longing in it. To me, that's that's a big thing. It's the longing. It's like I want to go. I have to go. And it just. I'm a music person. I'm actually a part-time musician. Not these days because all the restaurants are closed, but sure. it just it's it's the energy that he puts into it and the poetry that he puts into the energy. You just can't let it go. It just kind of keeps running through your head. everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Set Lessing Bruce, your podcast all about Bruce Springsteen, his music, and mostly his fans. I am your host, Jesse Jackson, and today is one of our series of episodes talking about Springsteen friendship. Uh, we, we put the call out in social media to see if people have a friendship that has been kind of either born through Springsteen fandom or has become stronger because of Springsteen fandom. And boy, a lot of you responded. So joining me today is Colleen and Adele. Welcome to the show. Thanks very much. Thank you so much. So why don't we start, uh, Colleen, tell us a little about yourself and then we'll go to Adele. Um, I live in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I'm the executive director of Hungry Solutions Minnesota. And I've been a Bruce fan since the 80s. Um, my ex-husband was a musician and we would argue between Jimi Hendrix and Bruce and I was always on Bruce's side. <laughs> so, Is that what led to the breakup of the marriage? Kind of, you know, bad taste. It just contributes to a lot of yes. things. So. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Okay, very nice. Adele? Uh, Adele LaTourette, director of Hunger Free New Jersey. Also a Springsteen fan since, yeah, since the 80s, early 80s. Um, and he's just been kind of a consistent soundtrack to everything that, that's going on. So both of you are involved with uh, food banks? No. Did I hear that correctly? Both I, of us run anti-hunger organizations. Okay, so talk to me a little about that. Um, this has got to be a tough time for you guys, right? It is. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's been, uh, the pandemic plus the need was already high to begin with really the 2008 uh, depression, you know, some people never really recovered from that. And then you add on all these things. It's, yeah, it's really dramatic. Yeah. yeah that's exactly um, right. Same in Jersey. Yeah. Um, awesome. I, you know, it is hard for me not to get political and I try to stay away from it because I know a lot of people turn to podcasts to um, get away from what's going on in the reality. And that's, you know, um, but has the, our current administration made it tougher on you guys? Oh. Yes, much tougher. Yeah. It's, uh, it's always an uphill battle, but when you have a federal administration that doesn't ease rules to make programs more accessible um, or increase benefits, God forbid, um, it just makes it impossible. You know, someone tweeted today um, that um, $15 an hour would make you roughly making $31,000 a year. Um, and that a beginning teacher makes $33,000 a year in Texas. So don't you think it's a shame that we want to pay people that work at a convenience store just a little bit less of than what a a person with a degree gets? And they got blown up like, why is it every time the point is, why don't we pay teachers more instead of why are we letting working people get more money? Right, right. I think, you know, all of the, the COVID um, disasters that accompanied that, the, the failure to recognize, you know, how much at risk people were. And then in Minnesota, the murder of George Floyd, 
just, mm -hmm. you know, it was, it was really had a enormous impact on communities who yeah. were off. So, you know, it's going to take, it, it's not like, um, you know, the new administration is going to be able to come in and wave a magic wand right. to fix everything. But at least what I'm hearing is this recognition of the fact that it's a problem, which is yeah. really a relief to hear someone say. It's so true. I mean, the fact that there's been no acknowledgement of the lines and lines of cars for people coming for food and people who've never, ever had to do anything like that before. It's just, again, it's that disconnect reality versus what's being said. It's yeah. You know, Adele and Colleen, um, I have a joke here. I run a call center and um, I always joke that I just want my agents to gas and it's give a blank. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, and I promise listeners, we're going to get off this in a minute, but I just want an administration that gives a blank. Yeah. You know, and, and just acknowledges. And, and I realize that this, you know, we have a lot of problems and there's a lot of things we need to work on, but um, what is it? The first step of any um, addiction or any problem is it acknowledging you have a problem. Yeah. Right. And uh, I also love the idea, right, that uh, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. So my hope is that this administration is going to first care, mm -hmm. secondly, listen to science and listen right. to facts, and three, okay, let's try something different. And if it doesn't work, okay, but right. at least we're doing something, so. Yeah, yep. And that really is the, the how our friendship um, Perfect leads in. Tell me about that. Oh, uh, it, I mean, I don't, I was trying to remember today, Adele, the first time that we, because we've both been at our positions for a long time and there okay. are national meetings that we both go to and, and uh, you know, a lot of other kinds of, you know, intersections happen between our work because we're sure. both doing the same kind of work in different states. But I just, I just, one time I remember that, um, I was talking to you and, and you said, well, I'm from New Jersey. And I said, oh, I love New Jersey. Exactly. <laughs> you said, really? <laughs> nobody <laughs> ever says they love New Jersey. Like right. nobody's ever like, oh, New Jersey. Gosh, that's, I love it. Like that just doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really, Colleen is a Jersey girl at heart. Yes. I mean, I'm born and raised. Colleen is a Jersey girl at heart. And I think when you, when you talk about Jersey, I mean, Springsteen, he automatically comes up. It's the shore, it's Springsteen. Like that's kind of kind of like what I call like the run of show. And, you know. Yeah, so um, embarrassing point that I always like to share is that um, I have true two obsessions, Doctor Who and Bruce Springsteen. Okay. I have a lot of other things I love, but those are my two big, I do podcasts for both. And if I meet anyone from the UK, my first question is, oh, did you grow up being a Doctor Who fan? Like, <laughs> right. talk to, who's your doctor? And if I hear anyone from Jersey, oh, are you a Bruce Springsteen fan? Like, <laughs> like and, and they, I realize that isn't a, that the, you know, it isn't a hundred percent of true on either, but that's my immediately first thought. So right. I, I love the idea. Like, I love Jersey. That's great. <laughs> and I was, I think the other thing was, is we were sitting next to each other at a national meeting and, you know, obviously the work we do, the topics are very, very serious, but at times you do scroll sure. through your phone. Right. And yeah. so we were, so I was scrolling through my weather settings and I had the weather settings for Asbury Park. And the dental <laughs> just looked at me like, really? <laughs> like, yeah, I really want to know what the weather is in Asbury in case I it's get great. It. Yeah. It's great. I mean, it's just, again, it's like, oh, it's, it's so cool. It's just very cool. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'll start with you this time, Adele. Tell me a little bit how you discovered Bruce and what about him spoke to you. Oh. I mean, I think if you are a Jersey born and bred and you don't know about Bruce, you're probably just not, like not even not paying attention, you're probably not really alive. Yes. Um, I think what I, I, I mean, it's, I, I still have a t-shirt uh, from his 1984 tour. Um, he's just, he speaks so much to the universal truths of struggling and 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 just so many things about 
I don't even know how to say it. Um, he just, his music speaks to a broad range of people for a broad range of reasons. Um, the energy in it, um, the longing in it, to me, that's, that's a big thing. It's the longing. It's like, I want to go, I have to go. And it just, I'm a music person. I'm actually a part-time musician. Not these days because all the restaurants are closed, but sure. it just it's it's the energy that he puts into it and the poetry that he puts into the energy. You just can't let it go. It just kind of keeps running through your head. And I'm lucky enough to know also. And I think this I don't know if Colleen, if this is true for you, but I'm guessing that it is. Like Colleen said, we've been doing this work for me. It's a little over 40 years, 41 to be exact. Um, and. I'm lucky enough to be on the turnpike going to a hearing about a bill that I'm putting up to deal with hunger and I hear Bruce and it's like you when you know that he has the same passion and he does about the issue of hunger. Um, it just it to me, it makes me love him even more and makes me more attached to his music. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to get to you in a minute, Colleen, a couple of things there. One, it appears even when he wasn't as political as it appears he is now and and i embrace that i I have no problem with that um you know he was always about food banks right Mm -hmm. like always in his shows but you know my we have some friends here from the dallas you know food bank they're the people on the front lines doing good work helping your neighbors if you see them stop by tell them thanks and if you got a buck or two drop it i mean every show right And, and I just think that's, um, it's a beautiful thing to do. And, and I, um, Adele, I have gone through a couple of spells where I've been unemployed for a long time. And um, I, when I got a chance to meet him at a book signing, not that he heard because it was, you know, such a shuffle, but I said, better days, land of hope and dreams. I listen to every day to get me through this. And when I was looking yeah. for my job, uh, early in 2020, um, you know, I had better days. I had uh, Dream Baby Dream on loop, his version, just, you know, got to keep on dreaming, got to keep on dreaming. So I absolutely hear that feeling. How about you, Colleen? How and and can you articulate, because that's hard to do. I always right. ask that in the questions. I go, can you tell me? And I understand some people just say, it just feels me. So mm-hmm. go ahead, Colleen. You know, I, I feel like Bruce's music and his poetry and, you know, going back to his commitment to hunger from Harry Chapin, you know, mm-hmm. way back, um, it's a gift to me. And so I, you know, I gave myself a gift to go to Ireland to hear him um, for my 60th birthday. I, oh, how wonderful. It was great. And I bought tickets on eBay. <laughs> And just flew to Ireland, which I, I'm very Irish, so that mm-hmm. was a familiar place. But I just feel like it's a gift to me every day. And there are so many different pieces of Bruce's music that I can put on that, for one thing, it, it stems the loneliness of, particularly during COVID, I think. Yes. It's really helped me a lot. Yeah, it's so true. Yeah, it's so- it, it's made me feel a part of something bigger, and it's made me feel like there's other people who are, you know, his latest album and the remembrances of, you know, people in his past, that's really helpful when you're struggling and you're alone. Um, When I had talked about, um, I had really, when right when the lockdown started here in Texas, middle of March, and then, you know, we went and some musicians started doing online concerts and you're like, Oh, we hope Bruce does. We hope Bruce does that. And, and once again, and I'm going to sound overly spiritual, but he sometimes knows more what we need than what we think we need. Mm -hmm. And I would have thought we needed a concert, but what we really needed was him doing these radio shows, Yeah, you know, where he shares some of them serious, some of them very funny. And, you know, lighthearted and sharing all this other music. And it's like, oh, I got an hour or sometimes a little bit longer with a friend just kind of making me feel better. So I I totally agree with you. The so. I, I almost picture in my mind you guys in a stuffy 
hotel, you know, um, ballroom, yeah. you know, they've got all that, you know, there's the big, there's the, you know, there's the stage and there everything and you guys get randomly sitting next to each other. And I picture this, you like Bruce Springsteen? I like Bruce Springsteen too. And all of a sudden, hey, you want to be yeah. best friends? But talk to me, tell me a little, you shared a little bit, but talk to me how you guys ended up finding out you both did this and talk about your friendship. I mean, I think, again, it was the, you know, to the fact that I sat next to somebody from across the country who actually takes her, takes, like her trips are to Jersey was just such a, wow, that's amazing. Um, but also Colleen and I share, I would say, to put it politely, a very body sense of humor. Ah, uh, great. <laughs> so we really connect on that level. I mean, we both like to curse a lot. Um, we both have the same wry kind of, I don't, I'm not sure, wry sense of humor, but also just dirty, filthy minds. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I am applauding. I love that. <laughs> and so, you know, and yeah, we, we also, we're smart. We know the work. We, we pay attention to the work and we pay attention to what's going on. But we also recognize that for our own mental health, like, oh, no, like we got, we got to just, we got to get down and just take a break and enjoy some laughs. Yeah. Yeah, the work is, the work is, you have to be courageous to be a leader in this work. I absolutely believe that. And so I think that, and you have to be a risk taker. You have mm -hmm. to be able to put, put it out there with legislators and yeah. stand firm on what you believe in. And I believe that Bruce Springsteen has all those characteristics right along with Adele and I. So it just, it's not like, I don't wonder, even in the, I don't know, just recently, there was a blip of him saying, you know, food is a human right. That's yeah. what we believe. We believe food is a human right. Yeah. And so, you know, the music, the sound, I mean, I love the sound of the horns and the, you know, the band and East, and I love that full throttle yeah. blast of music. Absolutely. That's, that just sets my soul on fire. So totally. Yeah, and I like to think he also has a really body sense of humor. I yeah. like to think that too. You know, <laughs> hearing you guys tell that story made me think of uh, Penn Jillette from the um, Magic Pen and Teller is really good friends with Lawrence O'Donnell from MSNBC, and he said that one time they were in a cab um, going somewhere, and at the end of and they were just having a conversation, and at the end of the conver at the end of the cab ride the you know, the driver said, were you guys mad? Why? I've never heard that much cussing <laughs> that short of a time ever. And, and, and Penn was like, uh, we were just kind of talking normal. So I, I just, I love that. You guys, it was funny. I always give a, for those of you who behind the curtains, I always say, you know, hey, if you absolutely need to cuss, let me know. I'll beep it. Um, and you both said, oh, good. You told us that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I love that. Um, I did. Colleen, you mentioned Harry Chapin. He was one of my early um, people that I loved. I, um, I absolutely, um, I got to see him perform once live. It was just him. He didn't have the band. Um, you know, a lot of his story songs are just amazing to me. And I do remember him talking about, you know, one for them and one for me, one for them, right. one for me. And he truly lived. And you heard Bruce tell all the stories about, you know, Harry wanted you committed. Um, <laughs> and, and I think that um, his legacy lives on. Um, I, so I'm sure it's got to mean something to you guys in this kind of work. It, and you know, his life was short and it yes. was, and it was, you know, it ended so abruptly in an accident. And yeah. it, I felt like he, when there, there's a recent documentary about Harry Chapin that's out, yeah. I watched it not too long ago. And that kind of driven passage uh, or that or passion, I think comes along with somebody whose life might be cut short, you know, yeah. that, you know, he, he needed to get a lot accomplished in a short amount of time. And yeah. I remember um, Bruce saying somewhere in some interview about, you know, you couldn't get away from him. He would yeah. talk to him and he would follow you and talk oh to you. Oh my God. You. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, you know, that's Adele and I do that. That's what we have to <laughs> do. Well, yeah, you <laughs> have to. Sure 
that people understand that this is food. This mm-hmm. is not, yep. you know, this is not, you're not in the position of deciding who gets food and who doesn't. Yeah. This, this is food. So. Um, I'm always struck by that. And um, I've struggled with my weight my whole life. And I remember leaving a Weight Watchers meeting and there was someone on the street corner with a sign, you know, wanting food. And we won't go into thoughts about that, but just it struck me, I had just paid $15 to eat less. And here is someone on a corner asking for food. So I rolled down the window and gave him a $20 bill. And I said, God bless, right? Yeah. And um, it does seem, and now I'm going to sound overly naive, but in a, in a, in a land of plenty, mm-hmm. it is sad to think that there are people, you know, going without. I remember someone in my family was um, almost complaining that with the school shut down, you know, now then, now then kids aren't going to get meals. Right. And instead of saying that as a bad thing, it was like, you know, look, they had to rely on schools to feed them instead of going, do you realize now that because of the situation, there may be kids not getting breakfast, not getting lunch? I mean, that's a sad thing. Right. It's awful. It's, it's absolutely awful. awful. And, you know, the thing about um, uh, meals in school that has always just boggled my mind is you know, kids don't have to pay to get books in public right. school. They don't have to pay to get um, supplies in when they're taking a class to do science experiments. But we charge kids for to eat. Yep. And then when they can't, they can't afford it, you know, around the country, we shame them yeah. and, and shame their families for not, yeah. you know, being able to afford it. And um, it's just not right. It should, you know, kids should eat. I school. wonder... I wonder why that started, right? Because I'm thinking back once again to all the conferences I've attended, you know, and uh, you start out with, you know, breakfast and then, you know, it's lunchtime and they go and, you know, often it's just a buffet, but sometimes it's a sit down lunch. And it does seem like when you, you built the system, a modern school system is included in our allocation of money is a hot meal for everyone. Right. 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 It's just the American philosophy of like kind of pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. And there, there is now universal meal service because of some federal waivers. So schools yeah. are serving, but I have seen letters to the editor that are, that object to that. And you're like, well, I didn't get meals when I went to school. Um, I'm just going to go back to Harry for a second. Cause I actually yeah, worked for the organization that Harry started world yeah. hunger Year was, was what my organization started as. And I was lucky enough to meet him at a conference um, he was a great speaker. Um, he was extremely passionate. Could be a little hard to fight, but he was, he was, he had that energy. He had that force. Yeah. Um, and he, he was, I think, Colleen, I think you're so right about that, that I think people with shortened lifespans, it's like they're on a mission and right. they have to, they have to get a lot done in a short period of time. And he really did that And world hunger year is still going. I mean, it's still going strong and they yeah. have a on every year. Um, and you know, they're doing great work. They're doing international work. Um, actually Tom shape and his brother still performs and lives in the same town as I do, which is oh, wow. I That's know nice. like weird connections, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, but it's, it's to have been lucky enough to meet both of these incredible people who have such a dedication and commitment to the work that we both do. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just an honor. I also like to think that Patty's kind of like us. <laughs> yeah. I think so. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, I do too. I yeah. think she's like us. I think she's body. I think she's, yes. you know, I think she's, um, you know, has a lot of passion about um, civil rights and, and yes. the rights of people. And so I, that, that I think is a good taste on his part that he would. I agree. <laughs> Absolutely. I agree. I, 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 agree. Yeah. I like that. Um, so, I always like to preface this question that the amount of times you've seen Bruce perform live is not a fair barometer of how big of a fan you are, because depending on your age, your economic situation, or even where you live, 
uh, can adjust that. But you mentioned going to Ireland. So, um, Colleen, how many times you've seen them separately, then Adele, and then how many times have you seen together? I think I've seen 50 Bruce shows. Okay. Oh, oh my God. I was trying to figure out how many I had seen. I mean, I never has, he's never come here to Minnesota that I haven't seen him. Mm -hmm. And I have traveled other places to see him, Chicago and- So uh, Colleen, you, you see him in St. Paul, right? Right, in St. Paul, yep. All right, so just, and I'm gonna let you tell, but a funny story, um, just this week, um, I had Betsy Hodges on the show. Oh, Former, really? Yes, oh, great interview. I mean, just, I, I cannot wait to share it. Um, she was just, a, she was just adorable. But Great. she talked about um, <laughs> that she was a little bitter that he always went to St. Paul. So right, she couldn't I know. do like a, she couldn't do it. Cause I'm like, I made the joke like, oh, we don't do keys to the city, Madam Mayor. Oh, oh yes, we would do. Yes, we do. <laughs> just go make that happen. She did say that she got to uh, honor John Hyatt as yes. the mayor of oh, Minneapolis. Cool. So, yeah, I was at that show. That was great. Yeah, yeah she's so, a real music fan. Yeah, and, and so she... Did, huh? I think they were at the auditorium in Minneapolis before the convention. They tore it down yeah. and okay. at the convention yeah. center. But they all, But I think they like the XL because it's a, the right size. Yes. It's more intimate. It's not just like, you know... Exactly, yeah. So how about you, Adele? Really, only about a half a dozen times. Okay. I mean, I've struggled to get tickets. I think that's the one thing about in this area. Um, in yes. Metro, it's, it's like I would call and call and, and I just, yeah. And, you know, porting off price tickets was, or, you know, right. off market tickets was expensive. So, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Good. Now, have y'all got to see a show together? No. no, we had plans to go to see to the film festival. And then mm -hmm. we talked about see here and now and, mm -hmm. you know, other kinds of Asbury based events. Yeah. But, but then, you know, yes, we are where we are. So, yeah. yeah. Do, do you guys think you'll now that we've done so much virtual, do you think when things settle down, will you guys go back to traveling for conferences or do you think that people will be more virtual i think we're going to be more virtual but yeah. i think we're going to have we there's you know <laughs> there's no substitute for getting in the face of a policymaker who doesn't yes. agree with you I so <laughs> um some things can be virtual she says yes. <laughs> <laughs> some things need to be lived so i think we'll we'll go back to that again and then you know, we'll, um, we'll be in Washington and hopefully we'll yeah. be together and, and um, awesome. yeah. yeah. Assuming people can, I was thinking about, I was actually talking to my sister this morning, she lives in the UK. And I said, you know, just the thought, just seeing the images that we're seeing now and having walked those halls oh. and mm -hmm. thinking about, are we gonna be able to walk those? Like, what is that going to look like? What is it gonna look like to try and walk into a Senate building or a house office building? Yeah. What, what is that? I mean, we've, I know that Colleen as well, like been on lines waiting to get in because of security. I can't even imagine no. what that's going to look like. Yeah, it's, it's no, just- No, it broke my heart to see. Oh, oh me too. It just broke my heart after all the years of being in Washington several times a year and, you know, doing hearings and all, and, you know, having office visits, um, you know, it, it just broke my heart. It just- yeah. And how proud so many like I remember when Al Franken was first elected and he mm -hmm. he couldn't wait to take me on a tour yeah. of his complete office and mm -hmm. show me every single thing and yeah so that I don't think that'll ever happen again no and no. my wife is still bitter that Al Franklin is oh, not a senator tell me about the, it I'm the, still the, bitter the hypocrisy of this you know, anyway, we'll move on. Uh, but I absolutely agree with you. And, um, you know, I'm watching this happen. And, you know, they come back after, you know, later in that night. And, you know, a couple people who had, for whatever reasons, like, oh, I'm gonna, you know, cater to this right extremist, a couple of them said, no, I can't do this. But I was amazed at the amount of people that doubled down. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, I'm gonna continue. And I'm like, are you effing kidding? 
I know. Right. Are you I mean, soulless? Or yeah. Yes, exactly. exactly. Soulless, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, you know, and I've just been, um, you know, I, I just look at Ted Cruz, who's my senator, and I go, what the F? I what know. are you thinking? So, yeah. You know, if you go on Al Franken's podcast, he's selling these mugs where he yeah. did a drawing of uh, Ted Cruz. Yeah. And it says, I hate Ted Cruz. And, and then on the other side of the mug, it says, and that's more than most of the people who met him. That's more than, <laughs> <laughs> so it's so funny. That is, that sounds great, yeah. Yeah, so you can buy the mugs. Where okay, Al I will, that's, that's very Ted good. Um, <laughs> you know, so I'm gonna, I, I'll let both of you guys kind of talk about this and, and because I'm fascinated by you, you fighting the good fight. Um, I call my congressmen and senators' offices. I email them, and it never fails. Like um, with the um, the new Supreme Court justice, right? That came out. I was like, guys, this is hypocrisy. Like I'm, I'm not even debating whether she's a good justice or not. I'm just saying it's the hypocrisy of this close to election. You guys are rushing through when Merrick Garland was almost a year. Address right. that. And, you know, they, they send an email that basically just doesn't address your comments at all. It just says, you know, it's, it's the Senate's responsibility to do this and we are following the process. And they just ignore what I say and just give a political answer that honestly just pisses me off. Except that wouldn't you say, Del, especially on a local level or you know a statewide level, uh, you're sending that message through. And sometimes 20 of those messages can seem like a landslide to some okay. makers yeah. and change their mind. Yeah, it's true. It doesn't take a lot. So no, that's what I was yeah. gonna ask you. You mentioned Bruce and I'm sure your convictions, right? But do you guys have that feel where you're just pushing against the tide? I think that for me, it depends on not at the state level. Honestly, okay. no, not at this, not at this point in time in New Jersey, we have a speaker who is, this is his issue. So oh, nice. It's been, yeah. It's been amazing. So it really depends on the timing. I think federally, absolutely. Federally, it's been like, ah, oh, we're not going to, it's just, you know, you throw up your hands and you do what you can, but you, you still have to fight. You still have to push. Right. Even if you still have to continue the conversation, you have to continue the advocacy regardless. So you just have to keep banging up against that, that brick wall. Colleen? We're eternal angry optimists. <laughs> Say that again? <laughs> That's exactly right. Yes. Eternally angry, angry optimists. optimists. Yep. I, I think that that should be the name of my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I love that phrase. Um, so talk about, I, I wanted you guys to share um, favorite songs or favorite albums of Bruce. And Colleen, we'll start with you. My favorite song is She's the One. I mean, okay. I, just, I love that, especially live. I just okay. think that that's just fabulous. And probably my favorite album still to this day is Born to Run. I love okay. Born to Run. So. Okay. Very nice. Yeah, Thunder Road is my favorite song. And I have to say one of, I, I think it might be my favorite album is the one he did about, I can't think of it off the top of my head. The one he did about his breakup with um, Julianne. Oh, Tunnel of Love. Tunnel of Love. I, I, I really, just the whole, again, it's more, it's more about the theme and how he puts it. And there's just the imagery, the vision, it's just, there's something about it that I really, I find very engaging. I love Tunnel Love too. And I, I, um, I had someone on the podcast three or four years ago said, um, you have to have your, you either have to have your heart broken a couple of times or you have to been in, in a journey for a long time to understand that album, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, like yeah. even like I've been married 35 years. And um, I thought you were going to say 35 times. No, You're right. That yes. would be, that would be a joke. <laughs> yes. Yes. And uh, so, well, my joke is, and 
Linda agrees, right? We've been married 35 years, 33 of them are the happiest because when you throw in Mel, there's a couple of times where it's not a happy marriage at all. She's not happy with me and I'm not happy with her, right? Uh, luckily, it's never gotten where both of us were unhappy at the same time and we worked through it. Um, so I, I, yeah, I love that album. Um, so if, no, I'm gonna say this, give me your thoughts on Letter to You. Oh, you know, I thought that there, there's a couple of songs and I, you know, now I'm, of course I can't pull Of course, them. because we're on a podcast. Yeah. Right. Um, I think that it's a, it's a, a brave look mm -hmm. back at where his history is all come together and it's forgiving. It's forgiving of, you know, the past. And it also gives you kind of, I think, you know, um, uh, there's a particular song where it's about, you know, I'll, oh, I'll see you in my dreams. Yes. I, I love, love that song. I love that, that song. That's, there are so many important people and particularly all the people who have lost someone right now. Mm -hmm. It's so meaningful to, to what's happening. See, and I think that's what he, what Bruce is able to plug into. And maybe this is true for other people, but I see it particularly in Bruce, is that it seems like his journey follows along so much of kind of the, the themes of the day. Yes. Um, also, his album about 9-11, which yeah, I remember right. going to a conference, one of our national conferences. I was on my way on the train the entire way there. That's all I listened to. That was it. That was the soundtrack of my ride there. I was obsessed with that album. Yeah. Um, so he's able to take these national experiences. That's it seems like that's what he's doing. Um, in Letter to You, it's more personal experiences, but he's again plugging it into what's happening nationally and 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 the loss that everyone's experiencing. And of course, he's going through quarantining at the same time. But he just he has an ability to do that. Um, including in his early work. I mean, again, all that longing and all of that desire and to be able to plug into that and then communicate that is just it's genius. I also think the fact that the band was back together, that was really yes. meaningful to me. Yes. I would, you know, I love Bruce when he does things, you know, like Western stars or, or other things, but I love the E Street band. So, I you know, I agree. the idea that, um, that Stevie and, you know, Niels and, and uh, everybody's there. Yeah. Um, so that, to me, that's the value of long-term friendships. And really that's what life is about. Right. You and know, that's what the album is about in a way. Yeah, yeah, I think it truly is. And I, um, you know, I watched the documentary on Apple and, and I was amazed at the friendship, right. That they, they're all sitting there with their little yellow pads writing down and, you know, you got to see a little bit of, no, a little too soon. No, that's that. And there's a friendship that has been there forever um, and an ease of working together um, is just really lovely to see. Um, I, um, I have made this joke many times on the podcast that um, this was specifically like first of September when there was rumors floating that we may get a new album. And I'd said, if I get a new album, um in october a new president in november maybe 2021 won't be the most crappy year ever uh, maybe it won't suck. yes yeah. and, and i say that with all I, I understand that for all the pain and all the death we've had i just kind of as you guys say you've got to laugh right you you just oh, do that gotta laugh. Yes, yes. you have to if you can't Absolutely. laugh forget it yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, That's why we're really good at finding humor in the darkest stuff. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. You're really, really sick humor. Like really sick. <laughs> um, okay, so how many times does someone make the joke when you're at a um, a meal and someone says, pass the ketchup and you go, oh, you mean a vegetable? <laughs> right, oh, yeah, it right. exactly happened. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, what have I not asked you that I should have? You know, I think that um, this, just like his music brings people together, it brought Adele and I together, and we just have this bond that is unbreakable that will, it's, you know, it's, it's a really important part of my life. 
That's awesome. That's great. Yeah, it's great. It's wonderful. I mean, the thing about doing this work, it's really hard to talk to people about what you do because most people are like, what? What do you do? I really don't get it. Mm -hmm. Um, They get like they get the like feeding people part, but they don't get the policy work and the legislative work that we do. So to have that communication with somebody, but also to have the friendship underlying it. And again, share a sense of humor and the dark sense of humor and just like to be able to to lean on each other that way and have that support especially in times like this but throughout all the time because again we sit in these conferences and it's like you want some bad news here have some of this here have more of this here have more bad news here go ahead have more bad news and you're like i can't and then to have that release with somebody is absolutely it's like divine effing intervention <laughs> and so yes. that's what we have and it's just it's it's yeah it's simply the best yep that's awesome um all right so adele i'm going to start with you um i've got to have you ask uh, got to have you answer the mary question so um that's a tradition that's how i end every podcast so jay armstrong is an honors english teacher in uh, the philadelphia area he just recently retired But um, every year he would have his seniors in his honors English class um, break down Thunder Road. They would read it as a poem. They would go through all the imagery. They talk about what uh, the themes, compare this to Robert Frost, The Road Not Taken. And then at the end of the two days, he asks his class, does Mary get in the car at the end of Thunder Road? So start with you, Adele. Does Mary get in the car? And then I'll hear from you, Colleen. Can I really not curse? Um, yeah, you can curse. F, <laughs> I'll yes. beep it. F, yes, Mary gets in the car, and maybe I'm just projecting because I sure as hell would have gotten in the car. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's great. Good. Colleen? Yeah, Mary gets in the car, but I think in the long run, they end up 10 minutes from their hometown. <laughs> there you go. That's yes. nice. I love that. Yes. I love that at all. That's, that is great. And Mary is very bawdy. And, yes, and, yes. And she, she probably she 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 uh she does a lot of volunteer work but she is uh someone who makes people laugh so i like that i like that a lot yeah. <laughs> um if someone wants to reach you are you guys on social media at all yep. uh, talk to me about that yeah I, i'm on twitter i know colleen's on twitter yeah i'm on twitter um i think my twitter handle is i'm on instagram too uh it's adele adele helen i think on on instagram it's adele helen on twitter i think it's i have no idea colleen do you know um oh i can't remember of course on facebook and my last name is latourette i'm pretty findable okay good yeah i'm findable on instagram and facebook and twitter okay all right do you know your i don't okay i'll look it up what's my telephone (laughs) number i don't know yeah i understand (laughs) Okay. Um, all right. I, I've got to end this with if someone wants to help after listening to this, do you have advice and do you have suggestions and links where they can go to help? In Minnesota, you can go to hungersolutions.org. I would say that if you're going to f- support your local food pantry, that would be very helpful. Um, give yes. directly to the people in your community and give them money because the sorting of food from a food drive is, is a labor intensive thing and they're short on labor. Okay. So if they have cash, they can get what they need. Okay. And no, uh, before you go, I want to start, no amounts too small, right? That's absolutely yeah. true. Okay. Good. Everything matters. All right. Adele. So for New Jersey. Oh, by the way, my Twitter handle is at Adele H. Latourette, but there's no E at the end. So okay. whatever. Um, okay. So absolutely backing up, Colleen, in terms of donate to your local food pantry, donate funds to your local food pantry, um, and they can buy what they need that they don't get from the food bank, which is really critical these days. And if you're looking at policy work in New Jersey, go to hungerfreenj.org, and you can see all kinds of information, and you can donate. All right, great. Um, I shared with you guys before I started this, you were my first people to sign up to do this friendship podcast you guys have set a pretty high bar 
Oh, good. <laughs> I, uh, I, I absolutely have loved talking to both of you. Um, I, I just, I love your friendship. I love y'all's passion. And uh, hey, we got it through almost an hour and none of us uh, had to get beeped. So that's, that's a good thing. <laughs> that's amazing. That's amazing. Yes. I have no idea how amazing that is. <laughs> uh, any final thoughts, Adele? No, just thank you for this. I think, it, again, it's been just great to, to talk about Bruce and talk about Jersey and talk about co- the friendship between Colleen and I and all that. I just, I loved it. This was really a fun way to spend a Saturday morning. Yeah, it's terrific. Well, great. All right. So I'm going to end with now out here on this road, out on this road tonight, I close my eyes and feel so many friends around me in the early evening light. And the miles we have come and the battles won and lost are just so many rivers traveled, so many rivers crossed. And I ask God for the strength and faith in one another, because it's a good night for a ride across this river to the other side, my blood brothers and sisters. Thank you, listeners. Thank you, Adele. Thank you, Colleen. Wash your hands. Remember to social distance. Wear an effing mask. Be safe. (laughs) And we're going to get through this together. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you so much.